I didn't want to become a domestic worker. For me, it was a shameful job, the lowest form of work. I wanted to be a teacher. But I had no option. My parents are farmers. I have 10 brothers and sisters. I had to earn money to support my parents. I became a domestic worker because you don't need any qualification, and it's the easiest way to earn money. But today, I am proud of being a domestic worker. I still look for an old couple, but I'm also the leader of domestic worker union in the Philippines. Let me tell you my story. I started off as a domestic worker in the Philippines. In eight years, I had two employers. Neither of them treated me well. In my first job, I was employed as a nanny, but I ended up doing everything. I still look after the children, but I also did the cooking and cleaning. The food was bad, and of course, my employer didn't pay any social benefits. My second employer, though, was worse. Still long hours, no social benefits, and certainly no overtime. But she was always scolding me. Nothing was ever right for her. How many times I ever cleaned the table? It was not always clean enough for her. But then, the sexual harassment began. My employer husband forced me to watch pornographic movies with him. So I never felt safe with him, so I quit the job to avoid this kind of abuse. My next job was even worse. I went to the Gulf to look after the child, but the parents owned the cleaning agency, so they hired me out as a cleaner, laundry worker, school janitor, and even bus conductor. They took half of my wages, they made me work long hours, and I got little food to eat. My first meal in the morning is at 3 p.m. in the afternoon. It was usually children's dinners or scrap that had fallen onto the floor. Why did I stay? Because I had no option. I need to finish my contract to be able to get my exit visa and to pay for my ticket home. I wanted to send money home to my parents and also wanted to save money for my studies. I spent two years in the Gulf, but it felt like then. With each new job, I faced more sexual abuse. But I tried to fight back. While working as a bus conductor, the driver grabbed and tried to kiss me. He only stops when my Ethiopian friend arrived. I complained, but he denied everything. But my employer did nothing. She says that the school was her number one client. The caretaker in the laundry where I was working tried to hug me, so I kicked him, pick up a knife, and threatened to stab him. Later on, the supervisor arrived and fired him. I'm happy because the supervisor believed me. In my next job, when I was a cleaner, my co-worker touched my breast. So I punched him, I complained, and he transferred. Luckily, my supervisor believed me again. I had no option. I need to speak out. I cannot bear the exploitation anymore. It was not easy. It was hard. I was in the country where I didn't speak the language. I had no friends to talk to. I felt very alone. After two years of hell, I went back in the Philippines to work as a domestic worker again and to be able to finish my studies. And finally, I graduated as a teacher. I thought it was a dream job, but I earned less than I expected. My salary is lower than the salary of a domestic worker. I even paid late and no social benefits, even though they kept promising me 
So I quit my job and back to domestic worker again. At this time, a friend, Himaya, tried to convince me to join the union. She is a former domestic worker, but now an organizer of domestic worker. She said, Novelita, please come join the union. No, I replied. But then the second time again, she approached me. Novelita, the union can help you. And then by the second time, I said, no again. I was in denial about my situation. I still felt that domestic work was shameful. But in the end, I went to a regional meeting called the United Domestic Workers Action Group, now called the United Domestic Workers Union in the Philippines. It was an eye-opener. They tell me about my rights and responsibilities of the employer. I realized that domestic work was decent work and not shameful. So the group, which I avoided for so long, changed my life. Today, I work to make ensure that no other domestic workers experience what I did. And in 2014, I joined the union. And in 2015, I was elected as a chapter president. And in 2017, I became the national president. <laughs> this is a big responsibility, but members choose me to represent well their issues and concerns. What we have achieved so far, in just three years, we have grown up to 200 to 2,000 members. This is a lot because many domestic workers are afraid of joining union. They fear that their employers would fire them if they join the union. We ensure that ILO Convention 189 and Domestic Workers Act in 2012 was implemented. We have built an organization that listens to domestic workers promote and defend our rights. We also help domestic workers to better negotiate with their rights and to stop sexual harassment and abuse. They can tell us now that they can better negotiate rights, add for additional day offs, and pay for them their social benefits. We joined the International Domestic Workers Federation, a global half million of domestic workers fighting for our rights. And last month, I was just elected as a regional representative in Asia, in the International Domestic Workers Federation. It is a continual struggle, but we will not give up. There are 70 million domestic workers around the world who face the same risk that I did. It was not easy to accept the working condition and abuse that I face. It was not easy to defend myself. I wish that my employers, who have been better employers, would treat me with kindness, dignity, and respect. Do you employ a nanny, a cook, a gardener, or maybe your family or friends too? Do you know their rights? Do you treat them with dignity and respect? Do you pay their social benefits? You can be our allies in the road of empowerment. We care for you, so do care for us and ours. All you have to do is make your home a decent workplace for us. Value us and understand the big contribution we make to your household and families. I was not born a leader, but became a leader. I found my vocation. 
It wasn't the teacher that I dream of, but to fight for the rights of domestic worker. I told you at the start of this talk that I was ashamed being a domestic worker. But today, I am proud of being domestic worker and representing domestic workers because I know now that domestic work is a decent work. And what is more, so do my employers. Thank you.